Welcome to Listen to Ladybird, I'm Paddy. Today I'm going to read you a book called In Green Pastures with Uncle Mac. This is a very old book from 1957. And I think it was written even earlier than that, but this was published in 1957. And Uncle Mac was a well-known presenter of children's stories. They called him Uncle, even though he wasn't their uncle. It's a nice picture. Some lambs. A girl and a boy. I guess this is Uncle Mac going on a walk. Here's the introduction from Uncle Mac himself. Dear children, I rather wish we had a magic carpet on which we could travel together one fine summer day into the country. In this way, it would be very easy to visit many of our animal and bird friends. Let us pretend that this happy little book really is a magic carpet, and that travelling on it together... We really are seeing all the beautiful scenes. I am ready. Are you ready? Right then, let's turn over the pages. And that's signed Derek McCulloch, who's known as Uncle Mac. Jingle and Jangle are great friends. Each dog has a small silver bell on his collar, and these jingle jangle as they run. Which one's which? Let's find out. The black dog with his paws near the hedgehog is a Scotty called Jingle. There's the hedgehog. Jangle is a white West Highland Terrier. There's Jangle. I hope the dogs are careful with the hedgehog curled up in a spiky ball. Both dogs think they have found a new kind of ball, but are not certain what it is made of. Two Scottish dogs. What else are we going to see in the country? The mother sheep is proud of her two baby lambs. Nearby are some more lambs skiffing about under the old tree. There they are skiffing. Have you ever seen lambs? They call it gambling is the word. Quite often in the spring you'll see lambs jumping around because they've just been born and they're all very excited. In the springtime lambs are seen everywhere in the fields. Their funny little tails are rather like the catkins which grow on the birch and willow trees. That is why some people call them lamb's tails instead of catkins. That's very confusing, isn't it? Because they're nothing like cats either. The, um, the little seeds you see growing on willow trees. Anyway, back to the story. When you see lambs playing in the fields, it means that winter is safely past and sunny days are near. Ma, say the baby lambs. Mama! Lambs in springtime. What's next? A fox. I'm sure you will like to meet these four happy little fox cubs playing outside their home while mother is sitting keeping watch. The cubs are scrambling around, teasing and yapping at each other. They look very much like puppies at play, and I expect you will think so too. Mrs. Fox looks as if she might be thinking about rabbits. Although she knows those furry creatures can run very fast and are not likely to go near the den of a fox. Here's Mother Fox. Fox and cubs. One, two, three, four cubs. Here are some rabbits. Here is a family of wild rabbits and there are millions just like them all over the world. They are different from the tame rabbits which many children keep as pets. Wild rabbits are very shy and will never let you close enough to stroke them. They live in holes called rabbit warrens where they snuggle up close to each other for warmth. When they run, they run very fast. Their white tails go bobbing up and down until they disappear down their holes. Perhaps you have a dog which looks exactly like one of these two fox terriers. One of them, whose name is Jack, has got his head down a rabbit hole and is very excited. He will not get far because the hole is small. Like most dogs, Jack and Jill love chasing rabbits if they get the chance. But the rabbits always hear the dogs coming and have plenty of time to scamper to the safety of their holes. These are fox terriers. There are few prettier sights than a cow with her baby calf. This mother cow is carefully washing the calf by licking it with her tongue. 
They are quite happy out in the meadow, where they eat grass and golden buttercups. Soon the calf will grow into a cow, and perhaps have a calf of her own. In winter, cows sleep in barns and are given hay to eat. In return, they give us good milk and fresh butter, which is made from the milk. Come too far. There we are. Have you a favourite toy duck which you put in the water at bath time? Well, just look at Mrs Duck swimming ahead of her big family of ten little ducklings, which look like toy ducks. Can we count them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There really are ten little ducks. Soon all ten of them will be paddling along close behind their mother. Ducks swim quite fast because their feet are webbed and they use them like little paddles. Mrs. Duck is white. Later on, her ducklings will change their colour and also become white. Duck and ducklings. Foals are baby horses, and they can stand up and run about almost as soon as they are born. The farmer is very pleased to have a new foal, and everyone wants to stroke it, but it is shy and stays close to its mother. Farm horses are gentle, hard-working creatures, and there is plenty for them to do in the fields. The foal is too small to work, but it will be not be long before it has grown into a horse. Back in the time this book was written, there were hardly any tractors at all, and most of the pulling of ploughs and pulling of trailers, all the hard work, was done by horses. So there were a lot of horses and farms, and they were working animals. But now they're not. It's quite rare to see a horse on a farm. Mrs Hen has a big family of ten fluffy chicks, and she has a busy job helping them to find food. She teaches them to look for seed and tiny insects by pecking about near the haystack. There are a lot more hens in the farmyard, and one fine big cockerel. When he calls out, cock a doodle early in the morning, he wakes everyone up so the farmer doesn't need an alarm clock. There's the cockerel, I think. He's bigger than everyone else. Here's all our chicks and the chicken and mother chicken. Here is fat Mrs. Pig with her large family of nine little piglets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine piglets. She's big, isn't she? Mrs. Pig goes grunt, grunt, grunt as she looks for extra food, while the piglets go squeak, squeak, squeak as they try to do what their mother shows them. The farmer gives them pig mash to eat and all sorts of scraps, but pigs are always hungry and grubbing about for more food. They are fond of all kinds of roots like turnips and potatoes, and they love acorns, though they must not eat too many. If you ever see a field where there, there are pigs, there won't be very much grass on the ground because they spend so much time rooting through the ground and digging it up. And That's why pigs are often in mud, because all the grass has been destroyed, because they've been walking around on it and snouting through it, looking for things to eat. Same with chickens, actually. They tend to be more dusty with chickens because they peck up the ground. Some people think the turkey has a funny face. It is really a very handsome bird. The turkey spreads his tail like a peacock and struts around the farmyard, looking very pleased with himself. He has strong legs and wings and is much bigger than a hen turkey. In some foreign countries, turkeys make nests under huge heaps of leaves where they leave their eggs to hatch. The English turkey has an ordinary nest. He makes a funny noise, shaking his head and crying, Gobble, 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 gobble. The turkey. And there's some horses in the background there as well. This dear little pony is a Shetland, and he and lots more like him come from the Shetland Islands off the coast of Scotland. This pony is called Tuppence by Jane and John, who are able to ride him. Tuppence is strong, although he's small, and he loves children almost as much as lumps of sugar. 
Here you can see him making friends with a fox terrier whose name is Snip. Jane, John, Tuffins and Snip have a lovely meadow in which to play during the holidays. A Shetland pony. Shetland ponies don't tend to be working ponies. They don't kind of work pulling ploughs because they're too small, but they're used for small children to ride. This is one of the prettiest squirrels I've ever seen, either in my own garden or in the woods. Just before winter, the squirrel pops into his nest, which is called a dray, and goes to sleep until spring. He makes a secret larder and fills it with some of the acorns that he's collected for winter food during the summer. The squirrel is very shy, and when he runs away, he flashes from branch to branch high up into the trees. He has merry bright eyes, like little shoe buttons, and a very large bushy tail. Look at that tail, it's huge! This is a red squirrel. They're becoming quite rare in most of Britain now. You're more likely to see a grey squirrel if you see a squirrel in a park. Unless you live in the north of Scotland, where there are quite a lot more red squirrels. Here are two busy little field mice. One mouse is sitting on top of its little round nest made from dry grass and blades of corn. Inside this nest, a field mouse lives with all its babies until they're big enough to manage alone. The other mouse is eating corn, which is a naughty thing to do. Yet it is wonderful to think this tiny creature can balance with his feet and tail on a slender stem of corn. I don't think it's naughty for a field mouse to eat corn in a field. If a farmer comes and plants corn in its field, then I think it's got every right to eat the corn. What do you think? Anyway, next page. Although Mrs Hare looks very much like a big rabbit, she has much longer legs, which enable her to run very fast indeed. Baby hares are called leverets, but you can call them baby hares if you like. Mrs Hare often lies out in the fields with her babies, and then she crouches close to the ground, pressing down the grass. This is why country people say the hare lies in her form, or in the little hollow she has made in the grass. Mother Hare and Babies The spaniel dog is a great pet in very many homes. He has a long silky coat and soft drooping ears, and is a gentle creature usually fond of children. If you have a spaniel, remember that his long coat and fur ears need lots of brush and comb drill. This is important to remember when he gets wet and muddy. The bird at which the spaniel is looking at with such wistful eyes is a pheasant. It has a long tail and feathers. Yeah, it's got a very long tail. The spaniel. Pheasants were brought to Britain by the Roman soldiers when they invaded Britain a long, long, long time ago. They brought them here, I think, to eat. And they've been here ever since. There are many kinds of pigeons, but the one with a tiny ring around its leg is the home kind. There's a ring around his leg. That's put there by a person to mark which pigeon it is, so they could recognise it more easily. The ring has the name of the owner on it. The beautiful white bird is called a fantail pigeon, and it is easy to see how it gets its name. If you look at its tail, it's like a fan. These pigeons are tame, but those which live in the woods are shy and rarely let you get near to look at them. A pigeon house, or cot as it is called, is where the birds live and rest. You'll probably see pigeons quite a lot like this in a lot of cities if you live in the city. It's a lot easier to get close to those. What's next? Toot -toot -toot! cries the owl from the branch of a tree. He nearly always flies at night and has big shining eyes which help him to see in the dark. Owls will not harm you, even though they may be big and strong. There are grey owls, brown owls, speckled owls, and even white owls. Owls help the farmer by eating mice, snails, beetles, 
and other creatures which damage the crops and stores of farm food. The owl. Look at the big moon up there. Mr. Goat is nearly always called Billy, while Mrs. Goat is called Nanny. This goat, out on the village green, has a neat little beard and a nice pair of horns. Have you ever tasted goat's milk? If you keep a goat, you will know the milk it gives is quite different from that of the cow. Some people like it very much. You can get goat's cheese as well, which you might like to try. This goat is tame, but in some parts of the world, wild goats live on hills and mountains. They are strong creatures. Nanny goat. If you get the chance, go online and look for some videos of mountain goats. Even though they've got hooves instead of hands, they're really good at climbing and they can go up some really steep cliffs. This animal looks fierce. It is only a fine highland cow with its baby calf. The highland cow lives mostly in Scotland, where there are hills and mountains. It has a shaggy, warm coat and bigger horns than the cows we see in most places. The cow has wandered down to the stream for a drink and is taking care that the calf doesn't fall in the water. They have come a long way down the hillside into the valley where the stream flows. These neat little dogs with bright eyes, short ears and legs, and rough coats are called cairn terriers. Although small, they are very clever at finding their way about difficult country and in lonely places. They are faithful dogs and make grand friends. I suppose a well-trained cairn terrier is one of the most obedient of all our dogs. Although the legs of the cairn are short, its body is long and it can move quickly You all love cats, and will wish that this one, whose name is Dinah, belonged to you. Here's Dinah. Would you like Dinah's six kittens as well? Dandy, one of the kittens, is having a lovely game with a ball of wool, and unless someone comes along pretty soon, they will be in a most awful model. There's Dandy and there's a the wool. He's going to get tangled up. At any rate, it will be hard to say which kitten is the naughty one because they are all just as mischievous as they could possibly be. It looks like they've all got mixed up with some sewing stuff, knitting and cotton. Pussy and her kittens. The swan is one of the most graceful of all our birds. Swimming along, swans look like beautiful little ships with pure white sails. These swans have seven babies called cygnets, which is a funny word. Except that they are greyish colour, the cygnets are like ducklings. When they grow up, they will be big and as white and just as beautiful and graceful as their mother and father. Swans are not very friendly unless you know them. They must never be teased. Swans and family. A nice quiet pond with lovely water lilies and water weeds, and the sun shining upon it all. That is exactly what Mr Frog thinks, as he sits comfortably on the leaf of a water lily, which has a strong stem and roots underneath. Mr Frog has had a good meal of flies and insects, and feels very peaceful and happy. His bedtime thought will be about a nice quiet damp place where he can go to sleep, and where he will not be found by anyone. Mr. Frog and the Pond. I think he might go to bed in the reeds. That might be a good safe place for him to go. Polly Parrot is a clever bird full of tricks and twists, which he does on his own special perch. What's here? And that looks like an old soda fountain for making fizzy drinks. He is holding a monkey nut in one claw and looks as if he might say, Pretty Polly, at any moment. Oh yes, Polly can talk very well, and is one of the few birds who is able to do so. The more you talk to him, 
the more he listens and learns. By imitating voices, he can pretend to be all kinds of people. This book would not be quite complete without our little friend Robin Redbreast. There he is. Here he is, neat and smart, with his bright eyes, little beak and slim legs. In winter, his breast feathers are quite red, but in the summer, they have a more rusty colour. A friend of every man, woman and child, Robin is always about when digging is being done. If snow is on the ground, then Robin will, likely enough, tap with his beak on your window. Nobody wants this happy visitor to go hungry. The end. Almost every child loves to ride a donkey, and if you have done so, then I expect you looked as happy as this little girl and her brother. These donkeys are quiet and friendly, and all they want is a reward, is a pat on the back and a good meal before they lie down in their beds of straw at night. This is a lovely holiday scene, made up of sunshine, sandcastles, bathing in glorious donkey rides on the golden sands. Donkey on the sands. And that's the end. Thanks for listening.